Hi, this is Doug Coy, and this is War of Words 7. I don't know why that's hard to say. War of Words 7, and uh, so what do you think, .com. Well, yesterday I talked about the power of imprinting. You know, when an image comes, and it gets imprinted into your spirit, and it starts to cause, like, fear in your life. In my case, it was my father, who had been in World War II, who had terrible nightmares, and I used to go in and see him waking up out of that nightmare, yelling and screaming, and boy, it put fear in my life. I had this terrible fear of war. I remember going to Oakland, California. It was right during the, the time of the hippie movement, and they had drafted me out of college. I thought I was gonna stay in college, but well, that didn't work. Got married, as I said, when I was 19. My wife was 18, and it was our first Christmas together. I had to go to Oakland, California, to the draft station to take my physical on December 27th, I believe it was. Can you believe that? Two days after Christmas and I'm gonna go possibly to war? the communists that we cannot be defeated by force of arms or by superior power. I have asked the Well, I go into Oakland, California. The hippie movement is on. Now I had long hair and the whole nine yards. I was kind of into that. And I can remember, you know, it was make love, not war, and burn the bra, and all we are saying is give peace a chance. And everybody was protesting, or it seemed like everybody was protesting in Oakland, California, the war. And I, I walk into the draft station in Oakland, California, and it was quite funny, actually. Here was this hippie outside. He had a sign said, Make Love Not War, and he's hitting this cop over the head with it. Oh, man, that was crazy. So I walked in, went through the whole thing. At the final station, they looked at my feet, and they said, You got bad feet. I said, You're kidding me. And I said, No, we're not kidding you. You got bad feet, son. And, I, and they gave me what's called 4F, which means I wasn't going to war. So I tell people, Hey, I missed the army by two feet, and I didn't have to go. However, I did live it in a lot of ways by going to Hawaii, and I used to do dances at the YWCA, and as I mentioned earlier, I'd see these young men that came back from the war, and man, did it ever imprint into my life. I lived the war through so many of the people that we were entertaining and helping out, and the stories I heard and the things that got imprinted into my life were unbelievable. I know one thing, I hate war. I don't know why we have to go to war. I don't know why humanity allows it to happen, but we do, and it's a terrible thing. I think Jesus, or the Bible talks about, blessed are the peacemakers. Well, I'd rather be a peacemaker any day of my life. I hate war. So anyway, at this point in time, uh, I came home, I said to my wife, we're not going to Vietnam, or I'm not going to Vietnam. She looked at me and was like, freedom, you know, where do you want to go? And I said, well, let's go to Hawaii. Because I had this imprinted image of Hawaii, you know, surfer girls, great beaches, hula girls, phenomenal sunsets, hula girls, you know, amazing food, hula girls. <laughs> so I had this image. And I went off to Hawaii, and I wanted to become a rock disc jockey and surf. I mean, so I... Became a rock disc jockey. My name was Tom Collins. Now here's an image. Tom Collins. It was my favorite drink. I worked at a radio station there. You know what the morning announcer's name was? Jim Beam. You know what the afternoon guy's name was? Johnny Walker. You know what my radio name? John, uh, J uh, Tom Collins. You know what the midnight to six man was? We were a crazy station. Bud Weiser. So that kind of tells you where our image was at that time. And I had a very low self-esteem. I just barely graduated out of high school, wasn't into college, didn't know what in the world was going to go on with my life. I was freaking out. I was trying to be a superstar, and I'd almost do anything to accomplish it. I'm going to tell you more about that, that side of my whole life where I thought I was a superstar, but really what I became was super scarred. The whole reason? I had a very low self-esteem. I just, you know... I put on an act. Everybody that saw me thought, hey, man, this guy's successful. But they didn't know the real me. They didn't know the image that I had deep down inside of me. They didn't understand what had been imprinted into my life. And I, for the life of me, it almost killed me. The imprint that I took into my life 
almost killed me. I'll tell you more about that when we get to the next section. This is Doug Coy, War of Words. Have a great day, and God bless.